Hello, and welcome to the Young Folk Knits podcast. This is episode 17. Welcome to the Young Folk Knits podcast. My name is Casey and I'm the maker here at Young Folk Knits. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for joining me again. I really appreciate it. If you're new, then welcome. This is a podcast mainly about knitting. There's also some sewing and <laughs> really who knows what other craft I might dabble in. I live on a small farm in Arkansas with my family. We are also beekeepers and gardeners and we like to raise chickens. <laughs> we stay very busy. Today I actually have quite a few projects that I want to chat with y'all about. So I'm going to jump right in with what I'm wearing. <laughs> Today I'm wearing my ranunculus sweater, tee, I'm not sure. I made mine a tee version. It's short sleeves. And the beautiful thing about this pattern is that it is very customizable. You can knit it with any weight of yarn that you want. You can, you can feasibly knit it with a skein of lace weight yarn. If you do that, it's gonna be a much more open weave fabric. And I knew I wanted mine to be more of a tee, so I knit mine with a sport weight yarn. Um, I believe it's called Linea, and it is from Little Fox Yarn Co. And this is the color Gossamer. So in my last episode, I talked a bit about circular yoke sweaters and how I had a lot of trouble with the fit. But this is an example of a sweater that turned out right. <laughs> I cast on mine using a German twisted cast on and I went ahead and cast on with the full number of stitches because the pattern calls for you to use a tubular cast on and I believe the way you do the tubular cast on in the pattern, you only start with half of the stitches and then you increase to your full number of stitches. I tried it and I did not like the way that it was pulling the neck and I also tried the version that had the larger neck opening and I liked it, but it wasn't exactly what I was going for. So I did this one with a German twisted cast on, the full number of stitches, and then I, you know, began the pattern with the yoke increases. So then this pattern has you do um, raglan increases after the fact. And this is an amazing fit for me. So I really want to keep this in mind on future sweaters that I do with a yoke that I'll probably start with a probably two sizes smaller than I would for my full bust measurement and then I will possibly try to do some raglan increases to increase the size I would need for my bust. I think that would really help with puckering so it won't look too big at the top. Y'all all had so much wonderful advice and tips on sweater fit and changes that you need to make. So I think I'm going to try quite a few of the different techniques mentioned in the comments. If you want to look back, it was on episode 16. And 
I'm gonna I'm gonna do some experimenting. I also really love this ranunculus because the fiber is a mix of I believe it has linen, silk, possibly cotton, wool. I'll have to look. Um, I'll, I'll link it in the description so you can see the fiber content in this yarn. But I think it's a great option for all season wear. And in Arkansas, it has been almost 100 degrees this week, which is unbearably hot <laughs> for May. But I definitely need fiber content that is linen, silk, cotton, just 100% wool isn't really cutting it for me right now. And so I thought today that this would be a really nice, cool and comfy top to wear. So as I mentioned earlier, I do have a lot of projects, but excitingly, I do have a finished object today. So let's start off with that. <music> episode I had mentioned that we were going on vacation which we did and it was lovely much needed it was actually cooler on our tropical vacation than it was here in Arkansas <laughs> so I really enjoyed being at the ocean and I was hoping to have finished this in time to wear on the vacation but I actually ended up finishing it on the way home. But that's all right because I've already been getting some wear out of it here at home and it is my Thea top. So my Thea top was knit out of Magpie Fibers Equinox Worsted Base and it is 65% silk and 35% linen, I believe. So it has a lot of luminosity, it has a lot of drape, and the best part to me about this yarn was that it, it's an excellent fiber for spring, summer, fall, really all season. I think linen and silk are all season um, fibers and I really appreciate that <laughs> right now. I'll show y'all a little bit of the stitch definition. I really, really love how the color dyes on this fiber. You can kind of see that luminosity and the drape. It's really, really lovely. And it actually fits very similar to the ranunculus. So I made the size XXL, and sadly that is as large as this top goes. So I'm going to start trying to do a little bit better about only knitting size inclusive patterns. I do think that's important, especially for summer wear. It is harder to find size inclusive patterns. And if they're not size inclusive, a lot of times they don't even have my size available to knit. So I definitely want to support designers that are taking the time to design and grade patterns that fit all body types. But I did knit this pattern and I am really pleased with how it turned out. The length on it is um, basically the same as my ranunculus, which let me stand up and show you where this hits me. So the ranunculus hits me about the top of my, it hits me right below the belly button. And I like, you know, high-waisted pants, skirts, even over dresses. I like to wear it with, and the, the Thea top hits me exactly the same place. So my friend Becky from A Hand It Letter is knitting this top as well and she is using the yarn that the sample was knit in and it's called for in the pattern. Um, I believe it is Lena. It is um, a yarn by Sadness Garn and or Sadness Garn. I can't remember how to say it. She's had to go down a needle size just trying to get gauge and this yarn was very much so worsted, heavy worsted <laughs> that I used. And so there, I was a little bit worried that the fabric might be stiff, but it ended up, you know, I think it's really nice. And the more I wear it, I think it'll be even more drapey. But I mean, look at that, it's, it's really nice. <laughs> Things I like about this, it covers my bra strap. I don't feel like I have to wear anything over it. It's a great summer knit that can be worn all alone and I think that the linen and silk are very breathable. It's not 
hot. It's just a really nice fabric. It's very, it feels very heavy. Um, the fabric is very dense, I, I think, but it makes it feel like really high quality. <laughs> I think it was really nice to get to use this yarn as a special project. It's on the expensive side, so it's not something that I could regularly invest in, but I was very happy to use it for this one project that I knew I would get a lot of wear out of. It called for a tubular bind off and I did not do that. I feel like sometimes the heavier the weight of the yarn, the less a need there is for a tubular bind off. So I just did a bind off in pattern and also, oh my goodness, who wants to do a tubular bind off with big, heavy, thick linen yarn? Not me. <laughs> so um, I'll just show y'all the bind off. I think it looks very neat. I'm very happy with it. I saw no need to do a tubular bind off. I did the same for the hem on the bottom. So when I went back and picked up the stitches for the neck opening and the armholes, I actually ended up picking up less stitches than was called for by maybe 10 stitches. And the reason I did that was because as I was picking them up, I could tell, I feel like this yarn will grow and I don't want to lose a lot of the integrity of the neckline or the armholes. I don't want my bra to show. I feel like it needed to have a bit more structure and it worked out really well. I don't think that it would have by any means needed those 10 extra stitches. <laughs> so I'm very pleased with how that turned out. I don't have anything negative to say about this except that I think it definitely needs more sizes added. And I really hope that the designer will do that. Otherwise this pattern and project get an A plus from me. I really am happy with how it turned out. All right, let's go ahead and move into my whips because they are bountiful. <laughs> show y'all my Vildness sweater which is so close to being done. Let's see it's the back. This is the front. So I have both sleeves finished which I'm very excited about. All I need to do is finish the body and add the ribbing at the bottom. Everything else is completely done and I'm really excited about this sweater. I just wish it wasn't so warm here. Um, I've shown you guys a lot about this already, but I really love the details of the yoke. It's simple, but very interesting. And it's a very engaging pattern. It's definitely not something you will be bored with. <laughs> Lerica has had some illness and just a lot of things going on. So I believe she said she's gonna try to get this pattern out um, in a week or two hope is her goal. We'll see how everything works out for her, but I am very pleased with this. I tried it on once I got both sleeves on and I feel like the yoke fits much better than I was thinking. You know, I'm very happy with it. I think this herringbone stitch helped kind of pull it in a little bit and hopefully I can quickly finish this up this week and have it ready for her pattern release. And then I'll be able to um, tell you guys all my thoughts on this project in the next in the next episode. I am using ampersand fibers, which you can buy from La Mercerie um, or shoplamercerie.com and really, really love the yarn. I, I'm gonna have a bit more information about the yarn on the next episode as well. So I can't remember if I had actually cast this on or not on the last episode. I may have just cast it on. I'm not sure. But I am testing a cardigan for Vera and Rose, um, Alex from Vera and Rose. And it is called the Isa Cardigan. And it is a beautiful, simple cardigan, but with some great details that add some, that add a lot of interest. And I am smitten. <laughs> I absolutely love this pattern. I love the yarn. Everything is coming together in a way that I am so pleased with. 
So you can see there's some really pretty little lace details, some nice ribbing on a button band that's not your average ribbing. I think it's really pretty. And look at the look at the edges of this button band. Let me see if I can hide my face <laughs> so it'll show it. But look at the edges of that button band. It's just, it's so nice. I really like it. It looks like a tubular cast on. <laughs> it, it rolls. Um, I'm very, very pleased with it. You have your two by two ribbing at the bottom. And y'all, this color, oh my goodness, this color is my dream color. I absolutely love it. It's this stormy blue gray. It's called Dr. Zhivago Sky. And to me, it is exactly what I had envisioned. I was actually wanting to make a cardigan in this color and I couldn't decide what I was going to make. I had quite a few different choices. And then whenever she had showed me the sweater that she was um, going to soon have ready for test knitting, I knew that that was going to be the perfect cardigan. I have so many outfits planned for this already that I just am very excited to get this done. So hopefully next episode I will have a little bit more progress. I mentioned before that I was test knitting this with Miga from Skeins of Dreams and Ruth from the Ruth Loves to Knit podcast. There is a great group of test testers. Sharon from Rui Knits, Eva from the Blue Rabbit House, Hey from Handmade by Pay. There's just there's so many amazing knitters testing this sweater and their color choices have given me a lot of ideas for my next <laughs> few cast ons. But this is, this is Madeline Tosh DK and it's a super wash merino. It's very soft. I did have to go up a needle size. I'm knitting these on size five millimeter or US eight because I could not get gauge on the US 7s, but I really like the fabric because it is so drapey and, you know, it's definitely not, not too loose. I'll just show you the fabric. It's not too loose at all, but I think it's perfect for our climate and perfect for me. So I'm very excited to finish this. I think it's gonna be exactly what my wardrobe needs. All right, so next on my list of whips, is a sock pattern. I'm sure that many of you know Morgan, who is on Instagram under Shop Knitting Nelly. She makes absolutely beautiful project bags, like this one, <laughs> which I'm holding my project in. So her, her shop name is Knitting Nelly, and she sews the most beautiful things. She knits the most beautiful things. Her color sense and her creative choices have always been very inspiring to me. And on top of all of that, she is extremely sweet. Unfortunately, this year she's had some unexpected and pretty serious health problems, and she's just had a really rough go of it. So some different yarn dyers, shop owners, knitters, um, I guess they decided to host a knit along where you knit one of Morgan's patterns. So Morgan's also a knitwear designer and she has a few sock patterns and a hat pattern that is available. So to participate in the knit along, you just need to buy one of her patterns or I think it's fine if you already own one, you just need to knit one of her patterns. And I have been eyeing the Chantilly socks that she designed and so I decided to cast those on. And the best part is that I actually got this yarn from Morgan. <laughs> this is some Viola sock yarn. I don't know what the color is. As you can see, she actually wound this ball. Even the way she winds her yarn is very creative. <laughs> but I am loving these socks. They're very easy to get into a rhythm. They're extremely intuitive but they have so much interest and I love the way that the lace is only on the front and not on the back because you kind of get that um, stockinette break <laughs> and it's just really it's been a really enjoyable knit if you can see that beautiful progress keeper that is from horse feather fiber arts I love I love that color hopefully I can make good progress on these socks I have so many <laughs> single socks that don't have a partner. I also have a lot of socks that I did finish the pair, but 
you know, it's probably 50, 50. <laughs> so hopefully I can work through these. I still haven't finished my mushroom socks. Um, what else, what other socks do I have? I have quite a few socks that I need to finish. Ugh, I'm getting way too many things on my needles and it's stressing me out. But since those projects were clearly not enough, I decided to cast on another. So the Pom Pom Spring issue, number 40, had so many different patterns that I want to knit so badly, but I just have not had the time. One of them was the cover sweater, which was the Effervescent Pullover by Amy Sherry. Sherry? think is how you say her last name um so she's a beautiful knitter designer i love everything she makes she just released a knitting pattern called radiance socks i, I believe and those are on my list <laughs> i went to knit those really badly as well but she is hosting a knit along and it is the knit diverse knit along and so I decided to knit one of her patterns and I am using Little Fox Yarns, which is the same yarn company that um, dyed this yarn as well for, as for my ranunculus. And I am, I'm gonna insert a picture here first so that you can see what the effervescent pullover looks like. It is a very springy, um, kind of lollipop daydreamy <laughs> color. And I love it. And I thought about knitting it in that color, but I didn't really have any yarn that color. It's not, it's not a kind of color that I would necessarily buy normally, but I would have for this project because I like it a lot in that fun color. But I couldn't really find exactly what I wanted. So I decided to stick with my tried and true <laughs> neutral colors. And I am knitting this out of Hen of the Woods. Um, this is both Hen of the Woods and this is their alpaca, silk alpaca base. And this is their, I, I believe this is Vixen. So it's their fingering weight that is a blend of wool and silk and nylon. And it's dreamy. It's just luminous beyond belief but so neutral and I think that it's just gonna be absolutely gorgeous together. So I did cast that on, but that's as far as I've gotten. And as you can see these stitch markers, I like to, so you're casting on like 300 stitches. And when I do that, um, I like to put a stitch marker every 50 or 100 stitches because I don't wanna go back and recount my entire 300 stitches every time, lose count, get distracted, have somebody ask you what's for dinner and then have no idea where you were at in your stitch count. So I put these on every 50 to 100 stitches and then I know exactly, you know, I know that that was 50 stitches. I don't have to go back and recount those. And I will just remove those as I knit, as I come to them as I knit it. I'm gonna be really happy to have this knit up and be able to wear probably it. Let's just be honest though, with the number of projects I have going on right now, it's probably gonna be fall before this is finished, but that's okay. I'll wear it in the fall. <laughs> that is all I have for my current projects, but I do want to show you something that I got in acquisitions. <music> of Lana Magazine issue 14, which is their uh, summer 2022 issue. And I basically wanna knit everything in this book. This uh, was designed with Autumn and Indigo's fibers. As you know, I'm a huge fan of her yarn. And I saw she did have some of those colors in her shop, beautiful. The main reason I bought this was for this scarf. Now, I believe that it, this is called the Summer Knot. And I just, I immediately fell in love with it. It's everything that I love in a shawl. 
it just could not be any more beautiful. And the color, green is my favorite color. Yeah, I definitely need this, y'all. So one of my favorite yarn dyers is Kayla from Naughty Pine Fiber Co. And we were talking about her different greens. I loved them all. Green is my favorite color. I couldn't pick one. <laughs> I was, you know, we were messaging back and forth. She was trying to help me. And I, the reason I couldn't pick one wasn't because there wasn't one that I didn't like. It was because I loved all of them. And I just literally couldn't decide between them. So she offered to dye me a color that is um, that is more of like a sage green. And I don't know what it looks like yet, but she's gonna be sending me that yarn in the next few weeks. And I cannot wait to cast this on. Literally never seen a color she dyed that I didn't love. So I had no qualms about saying, do your thing and I will knit it. <laughs> So I am very excited about that. Thank you for helping me pick out a color, Kayla. That is all I have to share of my current projects, but I am wanting to knit a bit on my test knit, my Isa cardigan. And if you wanna stick around and chat with me, I am going to talk a little bit about what I've been reading, what I've been watching, what I've been listening to, and I hope you'll knit with me. just really nice to get to relax. I got to catch up on a few books that I've been wanting to read, some that I had ready to listen to. I listened to two Harlan Coben books. I really love Harlan Coben and the reason I like his books is that his characters, his storylines, it's all very real. It's things that are definitely not likely to happen but they could. <laughs> it's plausible. And the characters aren't perfect, they're relatable, and there's always that twist ending. So I really enjoy his books. I listened to Missing You and Fool Me Once, maybe, I think was the name of the other one. But my all-time favorite author is Agatha Christie. I love her mysteries. Hercule Poirot, the Belgian detective, is my favorite character of all time. <laughs> it's so nice to escape into a different place and time and I think she's a remarkable mystery writer. So I have read all of the Hercule Poirot books and Miss Marple books. I read all of them starting from when I was 10 years old and I've read them all multiple times. After I read them all for the third time there's no way I could possibly at this point forget what happened so I can't be surprised at all anymore but there were a few of her standalone novels that weren't part of that Poirot or Miss Marple series 
that or Tommy and Tubbins that I thought I had read but I don't remember reading them. So I just got done listening to Why Didn't They Ask Evans. It was really good and I don't remember having read it before and then I, um, I saw that they have a three-part series from Britbox that Hugh Laurie produced and I think he might have even written the screenplay. He adapted it and he's also a character in the series. So now that I've finished the book, I'm excited to watch that. I listened to it and Amelia Fox narrated it. She did a really nice job. A lot of the Agatha Christie books on Audible, um, Hugh Frazier narrates. And I love it because he played Hastings on the Poro series that started back in the 80s. <laughs> so I love the fact that he narrates the books. It just feels so comfortable and nostalgic. I feel like I have to be careful about what I read or movies that I watch. If they get emotionally dark, it really affects my emotions and anxiety and I just cannot deal with it. And I'd rather not project that onto myself. So I, for the most part, try to steer clear of, of any subject matter that's too dark or depressing. Let's see, what have I been watching? I just finished watching The Thing About Pam crazy crazy I'm, i won't give it away if you haven't seen it but i mean unfortunately i had already read a lot of news articles <laughs> so i wasn't too completely surprised but crazy and it happened in you know missouri right above arkansas bordering states wow wow so i watched it on hulu and there are no words <laughs> if you've seen it let me know what you think all right, that's all I have to share. Thank y'all so much for joining me. I would appreciate it so much if you enjoy the podcast, if you would subscribe. It helps my channel so very much. Thank you so much for watching and happy knitting, y'all.